What's up, everybody? This show is my Nick Bockwinkle tribute show. Nick Bockwinkle, legend, WWE Hall of Famer, former AWA great, passed away, I believe, on in the on the weekend. I think on Saturday he passed away. Saturday or Sunday, I think he passed away. Anyways, he was 80 years old. Um, not, he, not that old. I mean, he could have lived five or ten more years. I don't think 80 years old is that old to be dying, but he passed away very sad, very tragic. My thoughts go out to his family and his friends. I'm sure they're going to miss him. And the guy was a legend. The guy was a hell of a wrestler, great technical wrestler. He was uh, in his prime way before my time, before I was born, but he did wrestle in the late 80s a little bit, and I did see some, a lot of his matches I have seen on DVDs. I didn't see them when they were happening, when he was actually putting them on. I didn't see them live, but I've seen a lot of his matches on DVDs. Uh I've probably seen at least 10, I've seen at least 10 Nick Bockwinkle matches when he was AWA champion. And when he wasn't champion, I think I saw him wrestle once or twice. Anyways, he debuted in 1955 in pro wrestling. His father was a famous wrestler. I forget his father's first name, but whatever. So his father's a wrestler, and he was trained by his father and Luthez. If you don't know who Luthez is, look him up on the internet. He, he was a legend, and he's wrestled a long, long time. So he debuted in 1955, and then Nick Bockwinkle retired in 1987. So he had a good run. He wrestled for a long time, almost 32 years. He wrestled for 32 years. That's a great career, long career, success. He was a, had a great career. He was very, very successful in his career. He was a top draw and a, the top star, probably the biggest star and the top star in AWA history. If uh, you, you could say Nick Bockwinkle and Vern Gagne were probably the top stars in AWA history and then in the 80's uh, when Hulk Hogan was there taking on Nick Bockwinkle and to matches for the AWA title where Hogan did win the AWA title but then the, they ended up taking it from him I believe the referee made his decision and took it from Hogan because I don't know for some reason, they took it from Hogan. Or maybe Hogan did win the AWA title, then they just stripped him of it because he left in late 1983 to go to the WWF. So I don't really know. if I think Hogan did win the AWA title at one time and was champion, but it was not for very long at all because I think they took the title back from him for some reason. I don't remember why. So, he had a great career. The guy was just, I mean, in his interviews, in his look, the way he dressed, his hair was always perfectly combed. He had sunglasses on, he had a suit on. The way he presented himself was great. He was a class act. Nick Bockwinkle was a class act. And I don't think any wrestler that ever met him or wrestled him I don't think anybody has a bad thing to say about Nick Bockwinkle. I'm sure he's a stand-up guy. I'm sure he was a great guy and a nice guy. He, uh, he never back, backstabbed anybody backstage and doing backstage politics. He never backstage any, backstabbed anybody, I don't think. I'm pretty sure he was a great guy and Nick Bockwinkle was definitely respected by all his peers. For sure. As I said, he was a class act. He was always dressed 
to look like a world champion. He always talked like he was a world champion. The guy was really intelligent, really smart, great, great interviewer. Uh, Nick Bockwinkel, he was actually he was ahead of his time. He, the guy did great interviews, really good interviews. And then right after Nick Bockwinkel did his great interviews, then we had Ric Flair do great, great, great interviews for years and years in the 80s. But Nick Bockwinkel did it first. He was probably the first wrestler to just cut great promos, great interviews that were intelligent and would make the fans think that Nick Bockwinkel, this guy is a real deal. He is, a, he is a, the world champion and he presents himself like the world champion every time. Every time you saw Nick Bockwinkel on AWA doing an interview, he always looked like a world champion. He joined the AWA in 1970 and then he teamed up with probably his most famous tag team partner, Ray Stevens. Ray the Crippler Stevens. Another legend that was uh, a big, big star in the AWA. And uh, Ray Stevens was also a big star in San Francisco, California. Where I'm pretty sure he sold out uh, the San Francisco Cal Palace many, many times. So he was a big draw there. And the team of Ray Stevens and Nick Bockwinkel, they were managed by the legendary, all-time great Bobby the Brain Heenan was their manager. And they were three-time AWA Tag Team Champions, were Nick Bockwinkel and Ray Stevens three-time tag champs. That's damn impressive, and they were a great tag team. Even though I haven't seen more than probably two of their matches as a tag team because I didn't see the AWA really at all when I was a kid. I just, I, I don't know where, it, I know it was on ESPN, but I didn't have cable, so I didn't see it on ESPN, and I believe they were a team in the 70s, so I did not, I wasn't alive in the 70s, so I didn't really get to see any Ray Stevens and Nick Bockwinkle matches really at all unless I could look them up on the internet and maybe find some of their matches to watch on YouTube. I don't know if they're on YouTube. I'll have to look it up. Anyways, Ray Stevens, Nick Bockwinkle were three-time AWA tag champs. That's great and damn impressive. They were a great tag team. Ahead of they were ahead of their they were ahead of their time. Or I'm probably using the wrong words there. They were a great tag team ahead of its, its time, whatever. You know what I mean. They were just a great team. If they would have teamed in, the, if they were younger and they could have teamed in the 90s, Ray Stevens and Nick Bockwinkel would have been successful probably in any era as a tag team. So then, and he's a... Uh, a AWA World Heavyweight Champion four times. Nick Bockwinkel won the AWA title four times. His most memorable matches and feuds were against Vern Gagne for the AWA title. They had probably, I'm pretty sure because the highlights I've seen, they've had, they did have legendary matches over the AWA World title. Did Vern and Nick Bockwinkel. And he had great, um, probably, probably world title matches against Kurt Henning. They had great title matches. They had one title match for the AWA title that went 60 minutes, or at least went very close to 60 minutes, and it might even been a time limit draw. I'm not sure about that, but I know they went. Nick Kurt Henning and Nick Bockwinkel wrestled a really, really long time. In I believe 86 I think it was or 87 or 86 it was on the AWA uh, WWE DVD they put out I believe that match was on the DVD he also had great matches not just with Vern and Kurt Henning but also with Larry Zabisco when the AWA was on ESPN 
in the 80s. They had great matches over the AWA world title. And uh, as I said, uh, he retired in 1987. And he actually got a job with the WWF and joined the WWF as a road agent. And then he did some commentary also. So he was a com commentator a little bit in 1987 for the WWF. Uh, at a couple of shows at Madison Square Garden that I own on DVD from 87. Nick Bockwinkel was on a couple of those shows as, as a commentator. He also was a commentator at a couple Maple Leaf Garden shows in Toronto or wherever that arena is. And I think it's in Toronto, Canada. Or maybe it's in Montreal. I'm not sure. But the Maple Leaf Gardens shows in 87 that there were the WWF would go there a lot and Madison Square Garden a lot. I think once a month they would go there and Nick Bockwinkel worked as a commentator on those shows and then for he just he wasn't around that long in the WWF as an agent as a road agent and a commentator he just he had a he was there for a very short time and then he left and I don't know where I think he went back to the AWA to be a commentator and like I think in 87 and 88 he was in the AWA again probably as a commentator and then in 1993 Nick Bockwinkel joined WCW and had a actually came out of retirement and had a legends match at Slamboree 93 against Dory Funk Jr. Nick Bockwinkel and Dory Funk Jr. went to a 50 minute time limit I believe draw and for two old guys they put on a pretty damn good match and Nick Bockwinkel still was in great shape in 1993 and he put on a great match for being retired for a couple years already and then after 93 I believe in 94 Nick Bockwinkel became the WCW commissioner and he I think he was commissioner for at least uh, one or two years in 94 and part of 95 I believe he was a commissioner and then WCW just totally dropped having a commissioner into late 95 they really had no commissioner around at all so Nick Bockwinkel his career lasted 32 years he was a I mean a great 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 wrestler great technical wrestler great talent one of the best wrestlers one of the best in the history of pro wrestling of all time and I wanted to do this show and pay tribute to Nick Bockwinkel because I'm a long time wrestling fan I am an old school wrestling fan and uh, I, he, Nick Bockwinkel deserves for me to put on a show about him in his career because he had a great career in wrestling and I'm a wrestling fan so I'm paying my respects to Nick Bockwinkel thank you for uh, all the years you were in the business you were a great talent great talker great world champion number one the number one thing I'll remember when I think of Nick Bockwinkel the main thing I'll remember is he was a great world champion. One of the best, uh, definitely the best AWA champion of all time, in my opinion. And he was one, probably one of the top five world champions of all time, is Nick Bockwinkel. If the uh, younger fans are watching this and don't know who the hell Nick Bockwinkel is, well, look his name, look him up, type his name in Twitter and watch some of his interviews and matches because they are very very good as I said he was a top star in the AWA for almost 20 years and he was a he's an all-time great and he is a legend in wrestling he was put in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2007 and sadly he passed away on November 15th of this year he passed away on November 15th 
2015. I think that is actually the date, November 15th, I think is the date that uh, Eddie Guerrero passed away. I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But I, November 15th, to me, sounds similar. Like, that is the date that uh, Eddie passed away. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't have any, my phone by me right now to look up if Eddie did pass away on the November 15th. So, so Nick Bockwinkle did also. But he did in 2015. He was 80 years old. Again, I pay my respects to you, Nick Bockwinkle. And I send out my prayers and thoughts with your family and your wife and your kids. Uh, you were a great, great, great legend in wrestling. And you'll never, ever be forgotten by AWA fans and major wrestling fans will never forget Nick Bockwinkle and when I think of you I always think of you as a great world champion in this business hope you enjoyed my show and my tribute to Nick Bockwinkle I'm sure he was a great guy and a really good guy never screwed anybody over never backstabbed them I'm sure he's up there so rest in peace Nick Bachwinkle, you were you had a great great legendary career. Bye for now everybody.